that I got a baby face. Let's prepare ourselves for a whirlwind ride through the tumultuous life and fiery end of Baby Face Nelson, a name that struck terror into the hearts of anyone who crossed his path. This man was a whirlwind of violence, a tornado of crime in the heart of the gangland era. Our story begins in the early 20th century, a time of speakeasies and criminal empires, with George Babyface Nelson he was no ordinary gangster. He was a force of nature, a whirlwind of crime that left chaos in his wake. Despite his boyish looks, he was a man to be feared, the kind who would not hesitate to pull the trigger. Nelson started his criminal career as a bank robber, and he was as ruthless from the get-go. His nickname, Babyface was the last thing his victims saw before they parted ways with their money, or even worse, their lives. He was a protege of the infamous John Dillinger, and their partnership was a match made in the underworld. But what made Babyface Nelson truly unique was his hair trigger temper. He was notorious for his quick temper, and anyone who dared cross him paid the price. He was like a ticking time bomb, ready to explode at any moment. And when he did, the streets ran red. But what's truly astonishing about his story was his audacity. He had pulled off daring bank heists and shootouts with law enforcement, all with a grin on his face. The headlines couldn't get enough of his exploits and he reveled in the attention. The end of Babyface Nelson, however, was as dramatic as his life. In November 1934, after a string of brutal shootouts and bank robberies, the FBI cornered him in Barrington, Illinois. It was a brutal shootout, and Nelson wasn't going down without a fight. He went down guns blazing, leaving behind a trail of bodies and a legend that would never fade. In the end, it was a life as intense as it was brief. Babyface Nelson was a whirlwind of crime, a figure who embodied the lawlessness of time. He was a gangster with a short fuse, an audacious spirit, and a trail of destruction in his wake. His legacy is one of violence, chaos, and a reminder of the dark side of the Roaring Twenties and the Great Depression. So there you have it, the electrifying tale of Babyface Nelson, a criminal who lived fast and died violently. He was a symbol of a bygone era, a name that still echoes with the thunder of tummy guns and the flash of headlines. Babyface Nelson, a legend of the gangland era. What's going on, Graveyard Shift family? It's your fearless shift leader, Dalen Spratt, clocked in for another amazing shift. If you can't tell, I am in Chicago, Illinois, y'all, and it's cold out here. It probably ain't cold to y'all Chicagoans, but to us Atlanteans, <laughs> this is freezing. But we're here for a very, very specific reason. We are in search of the legendary the infamous the Mr. Lester Gillis now some of y'all might not know him by his government name by the name that his mama gave him but you might know him as baby face Nelson you heard me right the infamous baby face Nelson we talking about the 1930s gangster that robbed killed stole all the sins up and down the Midwest and the West. Y'all did my research on old Mr. Nelson. And he was a bad man. See, a lot of the robbers back in the day, like Bunny and Clyde, they all were accused of murders. But it never really seemed like they were really murder hungry. More so just money hungry. But they say when it came to baby face Nelson, that man wouldn't hesitate to pull the trigger on anybody. 
when they found him, they said he had notches <laughs> on his gun belt for every person that he killed. That's how proud that man was. Needless to say, he found his fate the same way that he delved life. And his last resting space is literally right here in this cemetery in section C. Let's go see if we can find Lester. See, from the map that I found online, they say that Babyface Nelson is buried in section C. This is the St. Joseph Cemetery. And the landmark that they gave was a large cross is directly, directly across the path of a large, large cross. Oh, wow. I know how pinwheels are. I think pinwheels are an excellent way to communicate when it's not a windy day. Today's windy, very windy. Joseph. Blessings to you, brother. Are you here? If you are here, can you stop the pinwheel for me? Now, y'all, it's the wind is blowing hard. So if it stops right now. Joseph, can you stop the pinwheel for me, please? You slowed it down. I saw you try, Joseph, man. I appreciate you, buddy. Oh, you served in the war, World War II. Well, blessings to you and thank you for your service, man. I appreciate you. All right, y'all, let's leave Joseph to it. That was interesting. He didn't stop it, but he stopped it enough to be like, ah, I could if I wanted to now. <laughs> I could if I wanted to. Y'all, we were looking for a large cross along the path and supposedly the Gillis family plots are located right there. Wait, hold on, I think I see. Over there in the distance is a large cross. But shoot, <laughs> there's one over there <laughs> and there and there. <laughs> Y'all, this is like trying to find a, a needle in a haystack. Well, I guess while we're walking over there, I can give you a little bit of history about Mr. Lester Gillis, otherwise known as Babyface Nelson. You see, they got, that young man got his name, Babyface. Mind you, he was only like 25, 26 when he passed away. A lot of these people these bank robbers of the past were only like 23, 24, 25. When you think about that in relation to today, man, them kids, not really, but they are young adults pulling off these feats and tasks that are just like insane to think about. Now, when I was in high school, I knew a group of kids that robbed a bank. They robbed one and they got away with it too. They got away with it for a week until they started talking. And then they started telling on themselves and they end up getting caught. But yeah, so do you imagine 23, 24, 25 year olds robbing banks, going on murderous killing sprees? They say that Babyface was so small in stature with a smooth face, no real facial hair, that he literally looked like a child. So when he was committing these crimes, that's how they would like describe him. <laughs> like, I mean, he had a baby face. And that's where he got the moniker, Babyface Nelson. And he rocked with it. But please do not take it lightly. Because just because somebody's named Babyface, don't mean they won't, you know. Oh, uh, here we are, right here. Okay, here's the, here's the, the first big cross that we come to in this intersection. The Krez family cross. This is for all of the Chris family members. I, I want to say this is the cross that is used as the land marker to Lester Gillis's grave.
Chris family. Blessings, Chris family. Let's see. All right. Over here. This is the clear family. This is the the Dumel family. Oh man, you serve. Let me put your pinwheel back up. Let me put your pinwheel back up. Let me make you smooth. Let me make you smooth and play again. <laughs> There you go. I hope you're resting well, buddy. Thank you for your service. It's like you're trying to get it to spin. Can you spin it one time for me? Can you spin it all the way around just one time for me? I know it takes a lot of energy. But I would really, really appreciate it. You trying, you're trying. Let's get that blue one just over the hump. <laughs> well, I appreciate you trying. Thank you. There it is. Uh -oh. Almost, almost. Okay, I'll leave you alone. Just try. <laughs> okay. Y'all, look at this. Here we go. Here we go. The Gillis family. Here we go. Eugene, is the daughter. Mary's the mother, Joseph the father, and here we are, the son, Lester J. Gillis, 26 years old, died November 27, 1934, Lester J. Gillis, better known as Babyface Nelson. People have even left some coins on his grave. And this is his wife, Helen. She was with him up until the moment he died. She even served some jail time after he passed away in relation to her husband. Now let's set up and do a spirit box session. What's going on, Graveyard Shift family? It is your fearless shift leader, Daylon Sprague, clocked in for another amazing shift. Y'all, we are here. We are here, we are here. Good morning from Chicago. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know how I feel. I feel really, really, uh, for those that know me, I have always felt a very, very strong connection to like the 1930s era gangsters. I'll never forget my grandmother bought me a book at the library. They were selling books. It was a book called Ambush, The True Story of Bonnie and Clyde when I was little. And we read it together. And I was just so infatuated with like the lifestyle and the personas and the characters of this era. So this is from your Bunny and Clyde's to your Babyface Nelson's, your Pretty Boy Floyd's, your John Dillinger's. Literally everyone you could think of. It's just been truly, truly fascinating to me. So I've always just had felt, you know, just geared towards their stories. So we've done Bunny and Clyde on this page, but it is truly amazing to be sitting here at the final resting space of Lester Gillis. 
And I know the world doesn't really know him as Lester, but I'm sure Helen and Joseph and Mary, his family, knew him as Lester. But this is Babyface Nelson. But I feel kind of, I don't know, I feel torn because the things that, that Lester did, once you really dive deep into the story, you realize that they were horrible. Like Lester, Lester took the lives of a lot of people in the name of selfish gain. And uh, I mean, I'm not here to judge Lester. I'm here to pay my respect, but I just don't want anybody to think that we're giving any credence or like we're uplifting the actions in which he did because we don't but we're just here to hear his story and maybe we can get in contact with him cool lester my name is dalen i'm with a group of people called the graveyard shift we have literally a hundred thousand people almost that tune in and watch these videos this video is dedicated to you today we would love to hear from you directly this is your time to get a, a, a full, unadulterated, no holes bar interview. I know what a lot of the stuff you did in your life, the notoriety, the infamy was appealing. So you still have that to this day. So feel free to speak to us, man. We come in love, peace, and respect. Go. So I'm here to speak to one person. Is Lester here? Lester, are you here? Rosemary Satter. Rosemary Satter. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to ask you a few questions. Do you mind, Lester? Do you want to be called Lester or Babyface? Handy. I would love to refer to you in the manner in which you would like to be referred to. He said, that's fine. He said, Lester? Okay. I'm going to call you Lester. He said, sure. Okay. So, Lester... Lester. This truck pass by. So, Lester, what made you get into bank robbery? What was your driving force? Like, what made you want to continue to rob banks? Did you get a thrill out of robbing banks? Yeah. Did you do it for the money? Greed. 
Do you have any regrets? You are credited for <laughs> Alright, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. How was life for you as a child? What led you to getting into crime? What do you like about crime? Next. Next. Oh, wow. So, I can understand stealing the money and taking money, but you end up killing people. Situation. Did you have any remorse for killing the people that you killed? Were the people that you hurt, were they trying to harm you? Yeah. So we kill them? Do you remember how many people you killed? Were you proud of that? You ran with some of the most notorious people from John Dillinger. Somebody said here. Is he here with you? Are you still with your gang on the other side? Did you enjoy the life that you live? You did a lot in only 26 years. Did you accomplish everything that you wanted to accomplish in life? Did your actions in life bring you consequences in the afterlife? Just 
Are you living with your consequences now in the afterlife? Lester, did you love your wife, Helen? This lady. Is she here with you now? And both my parents, <laughs> they are right here. So you're with your wife and both your parents. So to all of the family members here of Lester, how do y'all feel about what he did? Sad. Stop. Somebody said charming. That sounded like three different opinions. Helen, was that you they called less than charming? I just forgot. Yes. Is that why you followed him up until the day he died? Even to the afterworld? What about Lester made him so charming? So you were there the day that he got shot that ended his life. How did you feel that day? It was difficult for them. Did either one of y'all have a feeling that it was coming to an end that day? Pretty much. Do you remember what happened? I do. Can you remind me what happened? Shooting. Well, Lester, do you know that the people that killed you, you end up killing them too? Y'all yeah. all shot each other. Have y'all all met on the other side? A lot of people admire the way you went out. What brought all of that fight out of you? Were you always a fighter? <laughs> Joseph and Mary, did you always know that Lester was going to be different? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
What type of things would he do as a child that lets you know that he was going to lead to this path? Mischief. Lester, do you remember the first time you got caught for a crime? You were responsible in today's dollar amount. You were responsible for stealing millions of dollars. He said, "Thank you." <laughs> but it seemed like you you made more money from stealing from people's homes their jewelry than you did from banks. Is that true? Is it our crew? Which type of jobs did you enjoy the most? What made some robberies easier than others? Sit shot everyone. After. After. Why would you shoot everyone after? Talk about. Talk about. Did you like the infamy that came from the notoriety? Notoriety that came from what you were doing? Did you like hearing yourself in the news? At any point, did you have the desire to stop? Did you know that this was only going to end one way? Do you enjoy when people come visit you? Not her. Oh, Helen, you don't like when people come visit Lester? Helen, let me ask you this. Do you have any remorse for the people your husband hurt? If you could do it all over again, would you still do the things that you all did? You said no. That's good. So you do feel some type of way. What would you have done differently? Well, I appreciate your time. Thank you, Lester, for speaking with us. 
Thank you, Helen. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you, Mary. Y'all, I'm interested to hear these responses. Because I feel like everybody kind of chipped in in his family, kind of letting us know how they felt about what he did. But I'm, I'm curious to hear what he said. Babyface Nelson, AKA Lester Gillis. We appreciate your time, man. We appreciate your time. I don't know what's happening to you in the afterlife, but I mean, it seems like you're the type of person that knew what you were doing and you were ready for all consequences. So love, love, love. 